Hello, welcome to the quick tutorial that we're putting together for Brickbench version 0.2, which is going to be our first version with editing. Um, so I'm going to give a quick tour of the user interface that you can use to edit the maps. I'll then show you how to what files are available for saving your maps and for saving your active projects. And then finally, we're going to go over how you can take your maps, package them, and then send them to be used with a new TT Games mod manager that's going to be released alongside this. Um, so first of all, the user interface. So we, as part of the features that we've been adding, we have separated the user interface into three different sections. First one is here, scene. This is the one from before, classic. So if I moved around, but otherwise it is the same. Meshes now then shows you all of the meshes. You can then click here and just go through them one by one. Let's see what this is. Who knows, but it's there. You can also see maybe something over here. And some of the properties on the right. And the last thing is the gameplay graph, which shows you the flow graph for stuff like Gizmo. So this is what's going to handle, for example, what lever you have to pull to open what door, um, what thing you have to blow up to do some other action, stuff like that. We're going to be focusing on the scene because at the moment, this is where all the editing is. Um, so first of all, you want to be able to select objects. You can, as before, do that in the search area over here, but you can also just click here, enable selection mode, and let's select an object. Let's take this panel. So as you can see here, stuff opens up on the right. You can switch properties here on the right as before. So we can make this, for example, protocol droid panel. So now if you go in game, you'll need a protocol droid to access this. Uh, you can move things around. So this second vector here is the drop-off location, which you can see if we move this, let's make this seven. So it moves, oh, it moves. We can also just put it here and then here. So now it is when you go to scan the panel, it will scan it from here. Uh, that is true for most things. For example, this special object, you can move it it moves its collision along with it, with it, which is pretty nice. Uh, let me turn the lighting on. There we go. There you go. You can move it over here, and then we can maybe even make it a nice platform so you can jump across. Um, the other editing we have, other than editing existing objects like this, is you can edit terrain. So if we open up terrain groups. Um, you'll see over here how you have all the different terrain types. If you click this Paint Terrain Properties button, you can now go and paint whatever property you want on the existing terrain. So for example, let's make this section over here a fast kill. So now if you step on it, you'll die instantly. We can make this a slow kill, so it'll kind of like slip in. You can make, make this slippery, make it you know, a bit more dangerous, you know, fun, fun stuff, we're making the stairs slippery. Um, you can also add certain objects. We're working on adding more objects um, in the future, but at the moment, you can add two types of gizmos. The first are zip ups, which are things to zip up with, with blaster characters, and also pickups. So if I double click, there's our new pickup. If we go into info, we can see it's a silver stud. Let's make it a mini kit and let's name it, I don't know, hay or something. Apply. So now if we go to gizmos, there's our hay gizmo, which is a mini kit. Uh, so yeah, you can, there is a lot of editing that can be done even now with a limited amount of objects. So now, how do you save this? Well, there are a few ways to save. The main way to save an active project, so something that you want to work on in the future, is you go to File, and then Save Project. What this will do is this is going to save into your current directory a size A, in this case, dot .brickbench file. So what, it, what the brickbench file is, is... It is, a it is a file that Brickbench lo that can load in, um, which is meant to contain all of the editor state at a certain point, which means that you can't, like, you can't take a Brickbench file and distribute it. I guess you could if you wanted other people to work on it, but it's not like something that you can just load in the game. But it means that it is uh, separate. So you can take your Brickbench file, put it on some random folder, and then open it from there. You don't need to be in the original level file to load it. Uh, so from this, we can, as you can see, we can go and open up. Let's open up Tatooine.brickbench. Actually, Moss Axley Brickbench. This is a different one that I was working on for test. You can see all the properties are there. 
And very importantly, this Tatooine A. Breakman, for example, is not in, in, in the Tatooine directory, but it works. So that is one thing you can do. Now to distribute mods, there are two other options. The first one and the recommended one is to create a patch file or a set of patch files. And what a patch file is, is a file that tells you starting at one file, what changes have to be made to go to another. Um, and the reason it's useful is because a lot of mods are modifications of existing files, right? Which means that there's not much of a point in just passing the whole file around when most things are the same. Um, so to do that, once you have all your edits, what you have to do is you have to go here and create patches. Now, what, that's, what this is going to ask you is it's going to ask you where the it can find the original files because a patch file needs as a basis the original files to work with. Um, so in this case, as long as you have um, an extracted, original, untouched copy of the game, if you modify the files, it's not going to work because it'll be patching the wrong file. But if you have an untouched copy of the game, you just give it the directory. So here we're putting in Moss Eisley A, which is my unmodified uh, copy of the Moss Eisley map. And then you just click open. Now I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do it here because it takes a few minutes to compute. Um, but once you have it done, you'll see, it's from earlier, you have your patch files. And notably, in this case, for example, right, I modified some terrain here, I moved this thing, and I changed this over here. The patch file is only 55 kilobytes large for the GSC, despite the original being 55 megabytes. And the GIZ is one kilobyte despite the original being 34. So that's really the benefit, right? Makes it much easier to distribute on the internet. Um, the second way is if you don't want that, or if you want to just work on it directly, like say you want to just load it up to see how it works, you can just export the map. And this will give you a directory and wherever you put it, it will just dump the files there. Um, it will overwrite whatever you have, but if you have maybe some a second copy that you use to test with, you can just put it there. Um, now, once you have these files, you want to package them to be able to put them on the internet to download for the TT Mod Manager. Um, and there's two ways of doing that. Now, all of this whole process was likely to change in the near future uh, as the TT Mod Manager becomes a bit more complex. But for now, the path you want to take is you want to open up here, right? So let's take our patch files, right? So we'll do one, two, three. Copy. Now let's go up here and we're going to make a new folder. And this new folder is going to be our mod. So I'm going to call it my mod, right? And then I can paste them in. Now what I want to do is you want to recreate the original directory structure that it was in, right? So this was originally a Moss Eisley A. So from the root directory, the path you need to take is levels, then new folder, episode, episode, Four, then new folder. Moss, Moss Isley, and then new folder. Moss Isley A. Okay, so once you have that, you can then go back, take your patches, and paste them into this directory. So this is now a complete mod that you can just either manually put into your game directory or ideally open up with uh, TT Mod Manager. The last thing you might want to do is if it's a big mod, you might want to zip it. Uh, so just put it into some file that can you then send over the internet. The best way to do that is if you right click on it on Windows and then do send to compress the zip folder and then have it be the same name, just click enter. The reason you want to keep it as the same name is because for the TT Mod Manager to detect it, it has the folder inside has to be the same name as the zip file. And by default, Windows does that. If you want to do this yourself, feel free, but that's a key thing. This folder has to match this folder. And once you do that, once you download it, put it into TT uh, Mod Manager, open it up, it will just paste it in as normal. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, there will be a quick overview of the TT Mod Manager as well. Uh, but yeah, happy, happy modding.